Okay, so here, here we're going to verse this Roman Catholic, former Roman Catholic comedic priest, former Roman Catholic, presently comedic priest, defending Roman Catholicism and lying on Ethiopian Christianity or Ethiopian Christian church origins, or we could say the Ethiopian Emperor Azana, you know, but here we have a former allegedly, allegedly, allegedly former Roman Catholic comedic priest, presently Roman Catholic comedic priest, basically defending Roman Catholicism. All right? See, this is what ones and ones have to really be aware of, you know, because ones that don't really get into the real origins, but get caught up on some pseudo information that's disseminating and circulating in Wikipedia and circulating around social media. And we're not saying that all of Wikipedia is, is incorrect. We're not saying all social media is incorrect, you know, but a lot of stuff that's popping and popular is like the broad road, people going th down the broad road and the broad road is leading to academic intellectual destruction. So first of all, let me let you hear what he says and then let's verse it. You know, but first hear Jabari, Jabari, who Sinetta calls the Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather of lies. Yeah, he can bob and weave lies. But we have a allegedly former Roman Catholic. He now calls himself a comedic priest. And we're going to tie up why so-called ancient Egypt, as it starts to progress through the Greek and the Roman times, right, how that leads to even ones like Jabari. Right, who presently considers himself a comedic priest, right? And it's always like he defends Romanism and Roman Catholicism as the authority. You know, we have met the enemy. Here, here, here. Check this out right here. Let's hear what he says on this. Uh... Okay, here we go. Okay, one hour and 20 two minutes of sister noble african spirituality versus the god of the hebrews this is on the so-called side platform jabari um is speaking former roman catholic just take note all right yeah so now he's a comedic priest go figure when in actuality the folks that gave you the things that you like were the roman church you're not following the the, the coptic church you're not saying i'm a coptic christian Nobody's saying that. I even hear people say erroneously, "Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, focus on on um, the Ethiopian Church." And then when I tell them the history of how the Ethiopian Church came into existence, they pretend that they didn't hear it. Uh, the Ethiopian Church has its origins in the Roman Church. Uh, so yes. now I'm not saying that they were beholden to them. Because they did develop some things on their own, but they came out of someone who was part of the Roman Catholic Church. He called back to Rome for reinforcements to help proselytize these people. Yeah. And it's those Ethiopians that go and destroy Great Nubia. Yeah. They destroy Great Nubia. Yeah. They sack Napata. No. Yeah. They sack Meroe. Yeah. They sack Meroe. So... Came or hurt K Salam. I would love for you. You said Jabari is wrong on Ethiopia. Now, if you're going to tell me that the Ethiopian church comes from anywhere other than the the conversion of Azana, ask yourself who converted Azana? Who converted Azana? Who converted Azana? Ethiopia had Christianity since 40 AD. You got to give a source, brother. Azana is the first emperor that converts Christianity in Ethiopia. Now, now before the Roman Church took over, All right, okay, man. took over the whole faith. Okay, there there were the Hebrews that were Christians. There were the Hebrews that were Christians. Okay, let's pick up here. Let's pick up here. So are right you here. gonna disregard those Christians? Okay. okay, enough of Jabari, enough of his lies, you know, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather lies. Okay, let's get into this.
All right, all right. That's just a rough record right there. I hope ones and ones were able to hear. He made a he made a couple of mistakes in his lying presentation right there. First, he says Napata, right? He says that sacked and destroyed Napata. And then he says Meroe. You know what I mean? That was one point right there. But then he says that some of the things that people and some of the black people like like actually came from Roman Catholicism. Now, remember, we're listening to someone who's admittedly a former Roman Catholic, and he pretends that he knew everything about Christianity because he was a Roman Catholic, you know? And it's kind of interesting what he says about Ethiopia because almost like projection, psychologically, it's projection, you know, because he's the one who was the Roman Catholic, you know what I mean? And the things he likes about it has led him to Cometicism. People might not be able to really make the link between him being a comedic priest, right, and his allegedly former Roman Catholicism. I don't think there's nothing former about it. You know, you never know. We might even have a Jesuit, you know, dissembler amongst us in the consciousness community, actually, you know. But let's address a little bit of what he has alleged and said. Now, he says Roman Catholicism. Right now, we're not going to even get into the two so-called Romes, you know, Rome, Italy. That's where we get Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church in Rome, Italy. And then we have Byzantium, Byzantium, which is considered and called the Eastern, the Eastern Roman Empire. In other words, when Rome, Italy was no longer effective, you know, there was the Eastern so-called empire out in Constantinople or what we have as Asia Minor or Turkey. And they was not even called the Roman Catholic. We well, talking about Byzantium, Byzantium. Yes, it has links with Rome, Italy, but so do black people with the Etruscans. The Etruscans were the first so-called Romans and they were black people. Same thing with the Ionians. They were the first so-called Greeks before they were called Greeks. A lot of things get mixed up, especially when the so-called European or white people take over. We have that here in America as well in this North country. We have in Australia. Too bad we don't have the Tasmanian people no more. We all know about South Africa, you know, where white people say, well, they were there first, you know, before the Africans. This whole debate about the white people coming to the Horn of Africa before the Africans. They say, well, the, the Bantus and the rest of them came down there, but there were other black people who were already there in South Africa. So the white man has this um, has this penchant, you know, for over exaggerations and lies. And then we have black people who come and fully endorse those particular lies. So he's saying that some things that black people even like, you know, come from Catholicism. And he says nobody calls themselves Coptic, but that's the exact link that's the exact link with the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahido Church or the Ethiopian Church. That's the exact link, especially when we say Tawahido as regards doctrine, as regards, well, what do people believe, whether it's the true belief, right, or whether it's the man-made belief, right? The man-made belief-ism, schism comes through the Roman Catholic Church. And even the Vatican, this is a later day right? A later day invention, Vaticanus, Vaticanus, right? So when we're talking about the Roman Catholic Church, we're speaking about Rome, Italy. When we're speaking about even Constantinople and the Byzantium and all of that, we're speaking about Eastern, right? Eastern, um, what they call it, the, the Eastern so-called empire, Right. The Eastern so-called empire and the Eastern empire, based on a lot of the research, you know, even Rome, when we goes back to the roots of it. Right. We have black people, the white hijack and the white takeover. Right. Actually comes in later on because it was the Roman Empire that was persecuting. Right. The Yehudi, the Jews, the remnant. We know about what happened in 70 A.D. Right. And as the sister noble says about the Hebrews that were Christians or the Hebrews that had faith that Yeshua, Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, was the Messiah, the Moshia. So we already have that link with Ethiopia, even in the Bible, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. When somebody said in the audience or in the chat, they said, oh, 40 AD, right? 
that's referencing right to what we have in the written document in the English of course the translation most ones we got to go from the translation first but what we have in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 where we have Philip baptizing the Ethiopian eunuch the one who's called the Ethiopian eunuch and that is circa 40 or so AD right 40 or so AD some say a few years, you know, there's a debate on, you know, exactly the year of the crucifixion, but that's in the same time as a time period of Acts of the Apostles, the same time period, right, that the New Testament, right, is referring to, especially in the word of the Messiah going forward amongst the Yehudi, among the Jews, and even those Yehudi or Jews and Israelites that were outside of Judea, but came forward regularly to perform the pilgrimages, you know, the three times in a year, according to Hot Torah, right? But what he's saying about Azana, and we hear a lot of this being circulated about Azana. Oh, Azana destroyed Nubia. He destroyed, well, Jabari, he says, Napata, Napata. He corrects himself and says, Meroe. Right now, when we get into that information, even information that's publicly disseminated on on social media, such as um, what's that Wikipedia, the Wikipedia page even addresses the fact that those who say Azana destroyed it. Right. Are reading a monument that's found that was found in Meroe. Right. And the history says that that civilization continued to go on and there's a whole back and forth, which is more like like a civil war. You know how we have Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, even in ancient history or upper, they'll say Upper Kemet, but the Upper Tawi and the Lower Tawi, Smai Sama Tawi, the two lands. And we have the back and forth that even in Egyptian history, right, there were disputes between upper and lower. They were all basically, you could say, the same thing, right, but they had their own civil war. They had their own differences, right? Meroe, right, was said to have attacked, right, Aksum. Right. And Aksum then goes back and returns the favor. And when we get into what is written in the Stella, right, the Stella, there's a whole Stella monument that was put up that they say is their basic evidence that King Azana of Aksum, right, allegedly, right, allegedly sacked and destroyed. You know, how many monuments do we read, you know, concerning the same thing from ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, whether it's the Nubians. The Nubians, right, were exploited and victimized by many of the so-called Kemetic or Egyptian kings. If we look at the history, they stole gold, you know, they forced them in submission, right, countless times. Yet it was the black pharaohs that, you know, like ones like Taharqa, so forth and so on, that came from the south. And that is the region that is contiguous and connected to Meroe and also to Aksum and to the Horn of Africa. People try to act like these two places means that they're totally two different people. They are the same people. You know, it's like saying East Coast and West Coast. It's like saying black people who live in the North, you know, the Northern blacks and the Southern blacks. It's like saying black people live in America and black people live in the Caribbean. You know, they like to pretend, you know how they pretend that we're all we're separate people, we're not the same people. But when we meet and greet and we get to know each other, we recognize that we're the same people. But the difference is, right, what the so-called white people, right, who want to overlord over us, wants to make us believe. But black people in the Americas and black people in the Caribbean are the same people. But they were subject to slightly different persecution and slightly different techniques of persecution by the oppressor, but they're the same people. In ancient Egypt, the north and the south had its differences. And ancient Smai Tawi or the Tawi, the two lands, Mitzrayim, called Egypt or Kemet by modern Kemetesis, also had its back and forth right, with Nubia, right, with southern lands, sometime with lands to the east and other places, but especially with the southern lands. And we know that many of the 
Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, so-called Kemetics, the Taweans, right? They had, how can we say, they had um, issues with their own origin. They later on had issues. They thought they were better than their roots coming out of inner Africa, which basically is the Horn of Africa, what generally may be referred to as Ethiopia, right, from many ancient sources, the inner Africa, right, Ethiopia. Now, remember even the Greeks, right, the Greeks had their gods, right, who were Ethiopians, according to some scholars and research, and they named their high god Zeus, Ethiopes, Ethiopes, the black one, right, the black one. Right. So let's just note those things right there when people say, oh, Ethiopia was named, you know, the white man, the Greeks called it Ethiopia. And then the Ethiopians call themselves what the white man called them. Well, the white man called the continent Africa. And you hear all these pro-Africans calling it Africa, even though we have evidence before that it was actually called something else, even according to European maps. And that something else was Ethiopia. So there seems to be aversion to Ethiopia among the so-called consciousness community. But we have a document right here. I just want to show this right here, right here. Now, this books that have been suppressed. Now, many of the so-called Rastafari and many of the Orthodox, we've been hearing these lies going around and around, and no one, right, no one seems to be defending the faith. You know, no one seems to be addressing these lies. And it seems as though this is... Um, another invasion of Ethiopia. Remember, Rome invaded Ethiopia, historically speaking, at least two times with the intention of forcing conversion to Roman Catholicism. If we go back in history to even the 1500s and even before, t before that time, the Romans, namely the Roman Catholic Church, Right, had an agenda to force Ethiopia, the Ethiopian church, under the sea, right, under the sea of, what do you call it, the sea of, um, the sea of Peter. They call it the sea of Peter. The sea of Peter is like to say under the rulership of, of St. Peter's Basilica, St. Peter's Kingdom, which is the Roman Catholic Church located in Italy, in Rome, Italy. When they talk about Constantinople, they're talking about a whole different location. And that was not called the Roman. It was not called the Roman Catholic Church. We're talking about Byzantium, Byzantium in the east. We're speaking about two different locations. They're confusing two different locations. It's like saying that 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 upper Egypt and lower Egypt was always the same. Right. Upper Egypt and lower Egypt was always the same and saying that when Egypt became united, though its origins come out of inner Africa, it was the same as Nubia when they fought against Nubia. The ancient Egyptians fought against the Nubians time and time again. And there was a very interesting hate and love relationship. Even though we are told that the origins of the ancient Egyptian civilization come out of inner Africa, come out of like the Nile, going all the way back down to like Uganda, Wakanda, R Rwanda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, that horn of Africa region. But it seems as though the ancient Egyptians coming from that began to see themselves as separate and different from that. And on various occasions, right, had military exploitations or military expeditions to exploit, right? They used the military expeditions to exploit the natural resources of Nubia. And this is something that a lot of the comedics, they, they don't talk about. You know, they say, well, Nubia was a part of it, and they're all black, black people, so forth and so on. And they speak about the Ethiopians and the Zana, what Zana did in his part of the country, of the continent, the Horn of Africa. And these peoples basically were related peoples, were related peoples. They try to pretend that the Meroe, that was Kush, but Aksum was not Kush, right? It, when even the scholars can tell you that this whole region 
right, should be understood as Kush, right? But others will say, no, 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 the Meroway, Meroway, that was Kush, right? But Aksum was not Kush, right? But now on this point of um, Negus and Neges, Zana, Ze, Ethiopia, we'd like to share this particular book right here. This is the book that they have suppressed, right? And this is the book that actually gives the true context and a true testimony of so-called Ethiopian Christianity or the Ethiopian Christian Church. And this chapter two of this particular book, let's go to this book cover right here and show ones this book. Hopefully ones can find this. We're seeking to try to get some prints of this particular book. Let's see, do we have this book here? Here we go right here. This particular book. This book is known as the Ethiopia Ethiopian Tawahido Church and Integrally African Church. The Ethiopian Tawahido Church and Integrally African Church. Right? And in spite of one saying, well, they've been to Ethiopia, they've been to the Coptic Church, they've been here, you know, they've been there. Well, that's good. You've been those particular places. But if you go to Egypt and you ask, you know, the Egyptians in Egypt, right? It will be at least 50-50, if not 60-40, if not 70-30, in favor of those people telling you that Egypt is not Africa. Right? We're not saying that all Egyptian, modern Egyptians believe that, but that's the general consensus. That's the general consensus. Now we know that that is not true. Right. But this is what is being put forward. So one can actually take the modern Egyptian perspective since they are the ones that have all the art and facts. The comedics are not trying to get back their ancient ancestral art and facts. They're not trying to reclaim their ancestral lands that has been hijacked and taken over for hundreds to thousands of years. They're not about that. It's just a little escapism where ones can pretend. But now their pretense is affecting the reality of other people, right? You know, those who ascribe to the Ethiopian origins, right? The, or the true origins of Ethiopian Christianity in the Horn of Africa. So there's a chapter here, chapter two, is called The Introduction of Christianity into Ethiopia. The Introduction of Christianity into Ethiopia. Now, ones like Jabari, he's trying to say, and this is what's being put forward. So, so brothers and sisters, some of y'all know better, but this is what is popularly circulating that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church or the Ethiopian Christianity, because there's been a claim amongst black people for, we could say, over 100 years, you know, over here in the West, coming to more knowledge and information, right, of the Ethiopian, we could say, church and of Ethiopian, the Judeo-Christian, you know, roots in Ethiopia, the Judeo-Christian roots that are in Ethiopia. I'm not saying that the Judeo-Christianity began from Ethiopia, but the roots, right, that predate the roots in Europe, predate the roots among the European Jews and among the so-called white European Christians, especially the Roman Catholic Church. So when one say, well, the origins of the Ethiopian Church is the Roman Catholic Church, well, they are off with that. They are off with that because the Roman Catholic Church, right, doesn't come into effect, right, until way after, right, way after I'm not saying that there was not Christians in Rome, Italy, right? And when we're speaking about Byzantium, which is called by many, it's called the second Rome, but it's a whole different region known as Byzantium, Byzantine. We're looking at the East, a different region of the world, which has a different history than right, than the so-called Roman Catholic Church that has its origins. In fact, Constantinople, Constantine, Constantine was not a Italian Roman, was not a Roman from Italy, you know? And there were many ones who were considered to be Roman, like the same ones who are, who are making these false allegations, like Jabari and others, who are American. They can talk about their comedic, whatever, but they are American. And they know they're American. You're American. You know, so one can say, you're American, you're not African, you're American. They'll talk about well, how they came over here, but your ID says American, right? It says United States of America. 
It doesn't say nothing African. Now you can go to Africa, you can get some IDs, you can go get accepted by a tribe or a tribe could elect you and accept you and you can get some of your paperwork and documentation updated as an individual, right? But that still does not change the fact that you are now an American. It's like when you talk about the Apostle Paul and say, well, Paul wasn't a, a, a Hebrew, he wasn't a Yehudi, a Jew, he wasn't of the tribe of Benjamin, he wasn't an Israelite because here he claims Romans citizen it's just like if you were in a foreign country you know what i mean as somebody who's pro-african right and now you're in a situation and you use wisdom and say you know what i'm gonna use my roman citizenship or my american citizenship to get me out of a situation how many of y'all have traveled abroad or traveled somewhere where you had to kind of you play that card play your american u.s citizen card Let's stop pretending. See, this is the hypocrisy amongst our people. Now, this book right here goes into more detail. We didn't want to even jump into this just yet, but this was brought to my attention what, um, what, what Jabari had said concerning the Ethiopian church. And they want to, okay, their main allegation is that Azana, right, converted, right, um, Ethiopia or Aksum, right, to, into Christianity at the behest of the Roman Empire under force and pressure. That Azana converted because the so-called Romans, or like they like to tell you, the white people, the white so-called Romans, force the Ethiopians into Christianity. This is what is being disseminated. And so I'm wondering where are all these pro, you know, pro-Ethiopia by like Orthodox Rastafari that be defending the Ethiopian Orthodox Church even against their fellow Rastafari who are not Ethiopian Orthodox, where are they speaking up? Where are their voices? Huh, Zaka? Zakarius, where's your voice? You like to you like to talk shite about your brother, but where are you defending the Ethiopian Orthodox Church? Where's the rest of y'all? Where you're not just jumping up on Sarnetta's platform, but putting up your own videos, putting up on social media. Let's start the conversation. How come you're not saying nothing? Now notice all these ones and ones, those who are fellow Rastafari brothers and sisters, whether you are Orthodox or not. Say if you're not Orthodox, you know what I mean is true. You got a lot of ones that be talking about, oh, his majesty was an Ethiopian Orthodox and we need to be Orthodox Christians and, and you know, Orthodox, like he, he's Orthodox and here's where we get the real truth and this is what his majesty, you know, approves for us. But where are y'all defending the faith? Where is your defense of the faith? I mean, these lies are just increasing so much. We're going to break it down and go through a little more systemic. This was just to jump out at the point, right? And say, hold up. Jabari is a Roman Catholic comedic liar. A Roman Catholic, that's what we're going to refer to him as. Because a lot of people may not see the link between his so-called brand of cometicism and Roman Catholicism. Some can say, well, they both begin with a K or a C. Right? Whether you want to say Catholic and write it for C, we know it go back to Kataholos, right? You know, which began with a K. In other words, the Catholics, right, there were those Catholic mean universal. Let, let, let's just state that for the record right there. Catholic Catholicos just means universal. Right. And there was the universal family. It's like saying that we as Rastafari are universal, I universal, non-partial, whether we're here in America, whether we are in the Caribbean, whether we're in South America, whether we're in Western Europe, in Eastern Europe, whether we're in North Africa, Central Africa, South Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Asia, Asia Minor, Asia Major, where Australia, wherever. We are just one Rastafari. It's a terminology that was incorporated into the brand name of Roman Catholicism, right? That came into effect later on, right? How can we prove this to you? Because if we can prove to you that the Roman Catholicism as the church, the Roman Catholic Church in Italy, right? This is where we get the Catholic. They add Roman in front of Catholic. And the Catholic term comes from a Greek term, kataholos, which meant universal. The first faithful ones in Yeshua who were Yehudi, who were Jews, we could say Hebrews or those who were descendants of the Israelites, 
they use this term for their universal brotherhood, right? They didn't attach Rome in front of it. Rome hijacked it. Rome hijacked it. Just like Rome hijacked the mentality of the brother Jabari as well, even though he's not, he's covertly defending Roman Catholicism, right? And he's, conf he, he's defending Roman Catholicism out of bounds, right? If the Ethiopian church was Roman Catholic, right, was Roman Catholic. See, here's, here's the thing about the, that might be a little difficult for some of you to understand. The term Catholic means universal. So we say we're universal black people, right? And then somebody come along and say American universal. Like we, we create a, a universal church amongst us as black people. And then somebody else comes along and say, well, they're going to call this the American universal church. Or they're going to call it the Roman or the European universal church. What do they do? They hijacked what we were doing and they put their name on it. That's what the Roman so-called Catholic church did. That's what they did. All right, so here, brothers and sisters, I want to show you something when you look at this, because you know how these Europeans and how, you know, the so-called white supremacists, as you like to call them, these inferiority, these <laughs> white inferiority posing as supremacy, you know how, how they go. They'll, they'll pretend they created heaven and earth and everything in between, right? But we ask the question here, when like Roman Catholic Church begin officially? Like when did it begin officially? When did the Roman Catholic Church begin officially? Now here, this is from AmericanHumanist.org. They say, with the conversion of Emperor Constantine in 313 CE, Christianity became legal and eventually was recognized as the official religion of the Roman Empire. Now when they say Christianity became legal, they mean that people were practicing something that, that, Rome or that Byzantium that they wanted to, how can you say, get the copyright for. You know, it's like playing this copyright game. We're going to get into that. Heal up to Ra Seymour as well was reasoning on that, but didn't have time to record that reasonment there. But hopefully we can return to that reasoning on the whole copyright patent and this legal game. Right. They say with the conversion of Emperor Constantine in 313 CE. Now we say Christianity. This is just a fancy name to say that the belief and practice, the ritualized practice of belief in, in Yeshua HaMoshiach, the one they call Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, or according to, you know, believing that in Jesus Christ. I want to keep that as general as possible. Christianity is just a way of saying, it's like when they try to say to us as Rastafarian, or they go Rastafarianism, you know, when they try to pull that card. When we say, no, it's not Rastafarian, it's not Rastafarianism, it's Rastafari. We are named after the man, right? He's our namesake, Rastafari. And they say, no, 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 you're Rastafarian, you're Rastafarianism, because they're trying to put us in their same ism and schism. So another way of saying ism on a level is the anity, is, is the itty, itty, you know, Christianity. Right, human, and then they say humanity. You know, almost like making a religion out of it. You, you, you get what's going on. Humanity. So they're saying Christianity became legal. You notice when it says Christianity became legal, right? This is clearly saying that there was a time when it was, right? There's a time when it was illegal, right? It's almost like with marijuana. You know the thing about marijuana? Now marijuana in some places is, is so-called legal. Mmm. Notice it's legal. Now the government can control it. It has these laws. It can limit it, you know, because, you know, they give the right, you know, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Right. So they give the right and they can take it away. Right. So Christianity became legal. So when Christianity became legal around 313, this means that it already was prior to that. This is just to dismiss this one point. We're going to get into the book, The Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. will give you the true history of the so-called so -called conversion of Azana. Right? Really, it was the officializing of a faith that was already believed by the people, right? And even members of the ruling house, right? And now the ruler became more fully persuaded, right, by a visitor, 
but it was already there. It was already being practiced in the Horn of Africa in various regions, and it's already documented too, even since roughly, some say, 34 to 40 AD with the the baptism of what what's called the Ethiopian eunuch or the Ethiopian official. Right, so between the times of roughly, we'll say 30 something, the mid 30s to 40 AD, right, till we get to the fourth century. But notice it says 313. So, what is the year that it is said that Azana, right, made Christianity the state religion? That's what happened. He made it the state religion. It's not like they were running around forcing people to convert to something that many of the people already believed. Many of the people already believed in what may be called for purposes here, the Christian faith or Christianity, but not the ruler was not fully affirmed to it. He still held to his traditional belief, you know, to his belief system or to the other belief system, right? But he was persuaded Right. Even more so because many of his people were were practicing belief in Christ. Right. Or Christos within that region. This is, this is something that's known. So what he did is basically made it so-called legal or official. He made it the official religion. They're trying to give you the impression that, well, when this Rome came, the Roman came in, they forced him and said, we're going to invade you and we're going to beat you up. And, and Azan said, oh, please don't do that. I'll become, I'll make my people Christian. It's this cartoon. It's this lie. It's this deception, right? But notice that they are now on the tip of the spear attacking Ethiopia. Remember, there was the first battle of Adawa. Right. Then there was the invasion. Right. Of Ethiopia during the times of the King of Kings. And now there's a spiritual invasion going on on many levels. Right. To undermine the true faith. Right. Of we could say the Ethiopian Hebrew people and in particular the Ethiopian church and, and, and Ethiopian Christianity. Right. Being a black Christianity from the beginning. We have even priests today lying right so this is how bad it goes even priests even high so-called priests lying bishops lying like the like the liar who was talking about oh the israelites are white and the woman asked him about well why how come they have like um you know black pictures you know and then, and then he like scoffs it he scoffs it <laughs> well you know like well you know people can paint it this way but we know that they're white people they're white people right this this goes 180 degree opposite Right of testified Ethiopian history for thousands of years, right for over a thousand years. If we would just put it, you know, not quite say two thousand years, but we can we can say uh, as an official so-called you know belief system for at least seventeen hundred years, you know. But then if we go back to the biblical testimony, this takes it back to two hundred, you know, I mean two thousand years. And this brings it more into the range, you know, of being Christian as far as believers, right, in an organic sense before, right, prior to even Constantine, that believers in the Horn of Africa, right, and believers that are identified according to historical documents, whether ones want to accept the so-called Bible or not. We still have that there as evidence, and we know how firmly that evidence was believed, and it has become a background, right, of historical documentation. Although, many ones want to seek to undermine it and say, well, he wasn't really Ethiopian, Ethiopian. He was from Meroe, right, but he was not from what, Aksum? That whole region right there. They still are depending on the white man to draw maps for themselves, you know, and tell them what the limitation of this or that was, you know, and we know how that thing goes. So right here, the conversion of, see, they're trying to make the, they're trying to make Azana Constantine. They're trying to superimpose on Azana, right? Let's go over here. They're trying to superimpose on Azana what has been said about Constantine, right? That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to superimpose. King Azana II of the Aksumite Ethiopian Empire. They were all were Ethiopians. The Meroites were Ethiopians, right? Were Cushitic, right? And the Aksumites, 
right? And Ethiopia, Cushitic, right? They both were Cushitic. It's like saying Upper and Lower Egypt, right? Were they Hamitic? Were the Nubians Hamitic? Yes, the Nubians were Hamitic, right? Actually, you know, Hamitic. And then we also have the Meroites. They were Hamitic or descendant of Ham, according to the Bible, Cush, right? And then we get those in the Horn of Africa in the Aksumite Ethiopian Empire as well, became one of the first nations to become a Christian state in 330 AD. One of the oldest surviving Christian nations in the world. Several Christian monuments date back to Izana's time, such as the Ta'aka Maria, the Cathedral of St. Mary of Zion, one of the oldest Christian cathedrals on earth, which existed nearly 300 years before Islam and 700 years before Christianity was brought to Europe by North African missionaries. What? 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 What's that? It said... 700 years existing how long 700 years 700 years before christianity was brought to europe by north african missionaries we're gonna have to check all this out right right 700 years so when was christianity really brought to 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 europe Right now, we know that there were Yehudi, there were Jews, but we also know from even the Bible and history where Emperor um, Claudius, right, expelled Emperor Claudius expelled the Jews, right, that were in Rome, Italy. They confusing Rome, Italy, right, and Byzantium, what's known as Rome, Byzantium, right. And no one to say, well, it's still Rome. Is this one part Rome and next part Rome? But this is very important when we're talking about history. It's like saying, right, though North America is North America and South America is South America, but we're talking about, say, the Alamo, right? And the Alamo happened more in North America and more in the central part of North America than in the south part of South America. You know what I'm saying? There's a big difference there. They're trying to confuse you, right? Confuse you, give you something short and simple that is just totally wrong. Right. So they're trying to make you believe that, well, you see, remember, remember uh, Constantine? Well, that's the same thing that happened to, you know, the same thing that happened to Izana. Constantine made Izana Christian, made Izana make everybody Christian, forced them to convert and force them to fight. You know, the Marowites, you know, they were already having their civil war. They were already having other disputes. They had other disputes amongst them. Right. They had other disputes amongst them. And we know that Africans, just like other peoples, but let's zoom in on Africans, that many times African tribes, African nations, African peoples might have disputes that lead to war, that lead to fighting, that lead to destruction. This happens and this happens without the input of white people or Europeans. Black people have been fighting black people even when white people were not even known to those very black people who are fighting each other. This is facts. This is facts. So here we have to the question, when Roman Catholic Church began officially, as we said, Catholicos goes all the way back to the New Testament, the Bible. So when those black Jews or those black Hebrews and Israelites are preaching and professing faith in Yeshua as HaMoshiach or faith in Jesus as the Christ, you know what I mean, from the tribe of Judah and all of that, you know what I mean, they use the term universal to say that though we're over here in Jerusalem, we know we got other ones, you know, we have other ones, brothers and sisters who also believe in Egypt, the Coptics. We know we have other ones in parts of Ethiopia. We know we have other ones in Armenia, in Syria. We have other ones as far as India. See, people don't understand this real history because they're only going to wiki history and they're only trusting the Europeans, but they're not looking at our own indigenous sources. For example, they're not looking at sources and resources like this right here. Let's just show this book again. Once again, the Tawahido Church. Now, this particular book, the Ethiopian Tawahido Church, an int integrally African church, is by Archbishop Yitzhak. He's the one whom his mass he sent over here, and this is a very vital book very vital book. It's like what we say, Likul, but it's Talua, 
right? It's small, but it has great, great, great import, right? As far as history, but it has been suppressed, right? By many of those traitorous, latter-day traitorous apostate Ethiopians. Now, we're not saying that it's not a problem that has happened in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, a problem, a crisis of faith, a crisis of doctrine, but this is all because of the continual war against it by Rome, right, and the Roman, even you could say the Roman Catholic agents. And I dare say that ones like Jabari, unconscious and unbeknownst to himself, or maybe he knows, we don't know what he knows, but he is an agent provocateur, right, concerning the Ethiopia, Christianity matter, and probably even a little deeper than that. But we're just going to address this right here because this is the topic of the address right here. So it's this man right here. This is his book, The, Af the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church and Integrally African Church. We're going to get to through this right here, not make this a long, long video, but just touch on some of the basics here and then go into more detailed points. These are topics and subject areas we have to go through right one by one to get the fuller detail and the fuller context we're just giving an overview right to show how false and frivolous right and phony and pseudo most of their points are right they take a little bit of history and then they twist it around because they are roman catholic agents whether they know it or not you know what I mean? They're like free agents, right, of this same, this same Babylon that has been trying to destroy the Ethiopian Orthodox, the Tawahedo Church, right, since it's, since, 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 I was, I can't say it's very beginning because the Roman Catholic Church of Italy doesn't come into effect until after the establishment. The connection of the Ethiopian Church most directly is with the Coptic Church of Egypt. But then biblically speaking, its direct connection is with the Ethiopian official known as the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. And even in Aksum, right, in Aksum of Azana, many of the people, right, many of the people, we could say the people of the land, many of the people of the land were of this faith, were of this persuasion, right, but it was a very grassroots it was a grassroots faith in Ethiopia, and what Azana basically effectively did was make it more of a state religion because he became more fully persuaded, more fully persuaded of this. But he was already familiar with this faith as the history and the Ethiopian records and documentation. Notice that they don't go to Ethiopian records and documentation. They dismiss Ethiopian records and documentation in favor of the Roman Catholic agenda, the Roman Catholic perspective. And we already know how they over-exaggerate. The Roman Catholic Church says it's about what they say. It's not even about what the Bible says. You listen to them and not the Bible. That's why they had their Protestant so-called reformation and had their own internal strife where ones who were believing in them had to break away from them. But let's first of all establish when did the so-called Roman, because when they talk about Emperor Constantine, they associate him with the Roman Empire because it is said that there was an extension of the empire out there, but it became broken off from Italy and became totally different. It became more representing a different perspective than the Roman Catholic, than, than Rome, Italy. Let's point that out. Right. But let's look at this right here. It became Christianity became legal and eventually was recognized as an official religion of the Roman Empire. You know, when it says eventually, it doesn't give us a date or a time on that. Right. It says that he was converted Emperor Constantine. And we're not talking about a Constantine of Italy. So when you see this big head, fat head, white man, statue, busk, that is counterfeit. That is false to who the real Constantine was. And is now for ones and ones that are familiar with like the cover and the gas, you know, and other documents, we'll touch on that a little bit more, hopefully, as we move forward. This question When was the Roman Catholic Church founded and by whom? Now, this is based on a Wikipedia page, History of the Catholic Church. You ever ask the question, why sometimes do they say the Catholic Church and why at other times they say the Roman Catholic Church? Remember, they're very clever at this dissembling game, right? At this dissembling game. According to Catholic tradition, 
right? This is according to the Catholic tradition. The Catholic Church was founded by Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. So Jesus was a Roman. But notice, they don't say the Roman Catholic Church. They said the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church that they're talking about is the original universal brotherhood. Uh-huh. That no matter whatever region one was found, we're all part of one corporate body. That go back to, to biblical doctrine that the Romans want to hijacked. As they do so many other things, like black people make, make music, right? We make all these different types of music. We develop all these kind of music. And they want to say, oh, this is American music. This is American music. You say, well, isn't it black music? Some of you say that's disrespectful. No, that's just identify it's black music. You know, and we say Chinese folk music. We say Indian music. What's wrong with saying that? For us to say it's black music, since black as a terminology identify black people in America. Black people in America were the first people to identify themselves as black, right? Proudly, proud to be black. Going back to the Ethiopian World Federation, the constitu the preamble of the constitution back in the 1930s. We have black people. Notice they were Ethiopian and the link with black people, right? So according to Catholic tradition, they say the Catholic church was founded by Jesus Christ. But notice it doesn't say according to Roman Catholic tradition. So the Roman Catholic church tries to backdate its origin you know, it's like saying, it's like for us as Rastafari to say that, well, well, Yeshua HaMoshiach was a Rastafari, right? Therefore, Rastafari began with Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ. Now, we can say that from a kind of a theological stretch, you know, and there's a, there's a, that's like more of an esoteric reasoning, right? But in actuality, Right? Rastafari is a revelation that was revealed in these latter days and time. We not behold the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. All of that. Revelation 5.5. 5. They say the New Testament records Yeshua, Jesus' activities and teaching. His appointment of 12 apostles and his instruction to them to continue his work. Now, anybody who's familiar with this is the whole keys and, and Peter and Peter's keys. And they talk about St. Peter. And then they have St. Peter's Basilica. This is what they use, right, to put themselves, you know, like the pecking order, to put the Roman, right, and we could say the white supremacy kind of Romanist in the pecking order. And here's what's interesting, that even in the origin of the Catholic Church, it was not even about the white people that we see today. They have kind of whitewashed it over time as a lot of history, real history has been whitewashed. They're all ups upset about Troy, Right, the fall of a city because it has it has Zeus as a black man. It has ones like Achilles as a black man, and has like the Roman gods, some of the Roman god. I mean, not the Roman, the the the, the Greek gods as as black men. You know, what I mean, Zeus was known to be Ethiopes. Uh oh. Uh-oh, so when did the so-called Greeks name the Ethiopians Ethiopians as they make you believe, they want to make you believe? Because their their very God, the Roman God, I mean the <laughs> I keep saying the Roman, but because Rome took the took their gods but changed the names. But the Greek gods, right? The so-called Greek gods, like Zeus, was called Ethiopes and was known to be, right, was known to be a black man. Let's just show this right here. This is important. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here's an example right here. Blackness. Let's zoom this in. Blackness in ancient Greek mythology, just as in Kemet, blackness was defined in early Greece. And now earliest Greece, the Ionians, were people who are pictured on the monuments of ancient Egypt as the Keftiu. In other words, black or melanated people. Black people appeared as gods in Greek mythology. The chief title of Zeus, greatest of the Greek gods was Ethiops or Ethiops. That is black. So we have this right here, Ethiops, Ethiops, black, right? So when they try to tell you, well, Ethiopia, the Greeks called, you know, the Ethiopians or black people Ethiopians. Well, they also call the greatest of their gods Ethiopian. And according to their legend, they dined, their gods dined with the Ethiopians, with, we can say, the black people, right? Did you know? So here we have it again. Did you know? So they try to suppress 
a lot of these particular facts right here. This is important to put it into full context. So we start to see the ancient world the way the ancient world was. We'll recognize all the lies in the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant academic and Roman Catholic, you know, um, paradigm. You know, all the lies in their, in their false and their false paradigm. So right here, we just want to just touch on this. There's more to get into this whole thing about the Zeus and, and we can go into even other, you know, other links right there because that's actually, you know, real history. When we talk about how it was, you know, and what it was. Just on the Ethiopian eunuch right here for a moment, the Ethiopian eunuch, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, got to go into that, right? Because that's one of the earliest testimonies. So this is what the history of the Catholic Church is going to say. All right now we have to take some of the things they say not just with a grain of salt but we have to actually back it up right by some evidence because they've been caught in lies at other times remember that the rome was set on converting rome didn't if rome converted the ethiopian church and they started out from rome then how come the roman catholic church was trying to force the Ethiopian church since they located where the Ethiopians was, you could say in the early 1500s and everything. Why were they trying to force convert them to come under the sea of Peter? If they already were from the sea, why were they trying to make them? And the, and the Ethiopians were resisting that. They, they, they resisted that. There was even wars that developed, like the Battle of Ottawa, and even the Italo-Ethiopian, the the, Ita the fascist invasion of Ethiopia, right during the visitation of Haile Selassie the first. How old is the Roman Catholic Church? The Catholic Church, they say, is the oldest institution in the Western world. Note the language. Note the language. The Catholic. Speaking of the Roman Catholic Church, is the oldest institution in the Western world. You see, when you say Roman Catholic Church, that becomes very problematic to their argument. They know this. So if you ask the question, how old is the Roman Catholic Church, they're going to change it up. They're going to say, well, the Catholic Church. What about the Roman Catholic Church? The Catholic Church is the oldest institution in the Western world. Western world. Byzantium is not the West. Byzantium, where so-called Constantine came from and, and all of that that they talk about, that is not the West. That is not the West. See how they, 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 they parse their language? Because it's important. Because then when you catch them, they say, oh, well, well, we said the Catholic Church. We didn't say the Roman Catholic Church. Well, you see the Roman Catholic Church, right? It traces, it can trace its history back almost 2,000 years. This is on the bbc.com.uk. This is up, right? Religions, Christianity, Roman Catholic Church, BC. You have to understand that they all are beholden. Remember Mystery, Babylon? They all are beholden to the Catholic Church. And that's a whole other than Roman Catholic Church. But, but, but let's look at this. Who first said, who first said Catholic Church? This is the key one right here. This is the key, the key one right here. Who first said Catholic Catholic Church. The first use of the term Catholic Church, literally meaning universal church, was by the church father, St. Ignatius of Antioch, in his letter to the Smyrnaeans. When? When was this letter? Circa 110 AD. Hold up. You're saying that? Wait, wait. But then they say it started with Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ wasn't like they say like 30 something, 34, some people say 34 AD. That's that that's the common Christian, you know, date that they give, 34 AD. So then how is it that the first use of the term Catholic Church was by the so-called church father Saint Ignatius of Antioch? You see this? So we're looking now at the term Catholic right? The Catholic Church, right? And this is 110, right? In his letter to the Smyrnaeans, his first use of Catholic Church, right? Now, it'll be important to go into a little more of, notice where he was at. Was he in Rome, Italy? Was St. Ignatius in Rome, Italy? No, that's Antioch or Antioch. 
Where is Antioch? Go look on the map. Where in Italy is Antioch? That's where we know where the head and the principal office of the Roman Catholic Church is, right? right? The principal office of the Roman Catholic Church is the Vatican, right? Which some say comes up around 500, sometime in the 500s AD, 500s or 600s AD. But it became officialized, right, as a state, officialized in 1929. So the Catholic Church was around Vaticonius, meaning divining serpent, Vatican, divining serpent, was around, according to some um, research and information, around 500 AD. But it doesn't become official until 1929. Until 1929. Remember, this is around the same time that they were about to invade Ethiopia. So when they make the Roman Catholic Church official, then now to invade Ethiopia, because Ethiopia was never under the sea. Right was never historically Ethiopia was the church was never or Ethiopia or the church either or was never under the sea of Rome was never under the sea of Peter and under the sea of Rome was never it was related to the Coptic church any church it was related to or if we have to say under you know or in some sense subordinate to it was the Coptic it was in part the Coptic church, and this is what connects with what happened in the time of Azana, right? This connects with that particular history right there. You know, we can go on, you know, what's the true origin, what they're going to say right here, right? Roman Catholicism traces its history. Now, this is Roman Catholicism speaking for itself. Traces its history to Jesus during the period of Roman occupation in the early 30s of the Common Era. No, no, no. Note what this one is saying right here. So the Roman Catholic Church says, well, even though we were persecuting these people, we actually are the beginning of these people. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Roman Catholic Church, Roman Catholicism traces its history to Jesus during the period of Roman occupation in the early 30s of the Common Era. Over a period of years after Jesus' life and death, his followers spread across the world across a world to form a universal in the Greek that was kata, um, ka, uh, um, um, katholikos or kataholos katholikos, right? Church with the Bishop of Rome holding primacy. And this is because of their Peter Pan lie. This is because of the whole Peter Panism lie, right? But one thing that is firm and certain is that the Ethiopian church and also its sister churches Right, never bow to the the Bishop of Rome, right? The Bishop of Rome. If anything, it was in Byzantium, right, where they first got together, then that's not a part of the Western Empire. That's not a part of the Western Church. That was a whole different something right there. Now, you know, if you want to go through this, they, they play a lot of word games, you know, but you really have to go deep, you know. Look. According to Moody Handbook of Theology, the official beginning of the Roman Catholic Church occurred in 590 CE with Pope Gregory. Uh-oh. 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 You see how deep we had to dig? You have to deep dive, right? You have to really deep dive, right? This one, the concise history of the Roman Catholic Church, right? The precise history, right? of the Roman Catholic Church, right? The origins right here, right? The origin. Now, Roman Catholicism itself maintains that the Roman Catholic Church, so this is their, this is their, their story about themselves. This is, this is, if you listen to their story, like Jabari, he, he believes their story, right? But then one might ask him, why aren't you still a Roman Catholic? Well, that's a whole thing there because there's a lot of them who say they're not, but they are. Roman Catholicism itself maintains that the Roman Catholic Church was established by Christ when he gave direction to the Apostle Peter as the head of the church. And, and that's disputed. That was disputed even from ancient times. Right? This belief is based on Matthew 16, 18, when Jesus Christ said, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it right on this rock you are peter and on this rock right you know he didn't say on you right but he says on this rock but you know that's how they argue but now let's look at moody the moody handbook of theology 
The Moody Handbook of Theology says that the official beginning of the Roman Catholic Church occurred in 590 CE. This, this is closest to the truth. This here is closest to the truth right here. 590, wait. So if Azana was forced by the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Church officially began in 590, was that unofficial? Or are these people straight out lying to you and confusing history? They're, they're out of their league, they're out of their depth, right? But it's like the lie can go around the world like 10 times before the truth has time to put on its boots. You know what I mean? So Pope Gregory is pointed to, right? This time marked the consolidated, the consolidated of lands control, I would say consolidation, of lands controlled by authority of the Pope, right? That's like the white man doing his kind of, it's a kind of white supremacism kind of thing. You, you have to always what's going on here, right? And thus the church's power into what would later be known as the papal states, right? As the papal states. Ethiopia was outside of that as well as the other churches. And because to prove that it was outside of that and the other churches, let's go back to this, leave this on the screen for a moment. To prove that that was outside of that and outside of the other churches, right? For thousands, not thousands, but for hundreds of years, hundreds, it's been just over a little over a thousand years since it's 2023 right now, right? But we have various incidents in history where they are seeking to force Right, Ethiopia. the Battle of Ottawa was one example by, by Italy, fascist Italy. Right, the Pope blessed that. Right, same thing with Benito Mussolini, the Pope blessed that. Right, everyone who knows what it, it even the least understands what that really was about. Rome was based, the Roman Catholic Church was saying, We control everybody, but these Ethiopian N words, you know, these Ethiopians. Right, are still maintaining a black Christ, a black Madonna, you know, and a connection with Jews and the Israel and everything. We got to stop this. We got to stop this. We're coming into the modern world now. That's why, if you notice, 1929 is when the Vatican officially, right? If you look up Vatican history, they'll tell you in 1929, Right? In 1929, we could go back to that other page and look at that. But like we said, we didn't intend for this to be a long video. But, you know, sometimes when the lies are so, so, so deep and the lies are even convoluted and, and complicated, it takes us a little moment, like in the example about the lie going around the world, you know, five or ten times before truth has time to put on its boots. Right. This is what we're faced with right here. But no matter how many lies they want to spread, they can't shift the truth, you know, from its place. Right. There's more of a connection with Armenia. Right. If, it, if you want to say who's who, Armenia. I mean, there's stories that are told, you know, about Frumentius, but even the whole link with Frumentius, right, is not the Roman Catholic Church. Right. We're not talking about the Roman Catholic Church. You see what I'm saying? We're not talking about, yes, there is a Roman Empire that is floating around, right? But as far as the Roman Catholic Church, right, the official beginning of it was in 590 CE. See, the official beginning of the Roman Catholic Church in Italy, the one that you know about, the one that they're speaking about, right? They tried to put Constantinople in because that is the Roman Catholics trying to claim everything, right? That's like the white supremacist trying to claim everything. He's trying to claim the origin of it. You know what I mean? If, 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 if you leave it to them, you know, they will say that they're the first human beings and black people, well, they can't say came out of them. So that's why they had all these false theories of the origin of black people and, and come from monkeys and apes. And yes, there is an evolution amongst within humanity, spiritually, psychologically, but also physically. We're all a little seed, right? And then in our mother's wombs, we grow. And then when we are born, we come into the world, we also grow up, we get bigger. So there are evolutions right there. But what we're explaining right here is that the the Roman Catholic Church, the official beginning is 590 CE with Pope Gregory. And the Ethiopian Church, right, was never under 
right? The Roman, the sea, the sea of Peter, right? And because the Rome, the, the Ethiopian church was never under the Roman sea of Peter, this became very problematic for them. A couple of books you need to read. This is a very good book. I like to go into this book right here, right? The church history of Ethiopia, right? This was written in 1696, right? 1696, Michael Geddes, the history the church history of Ethiopia, the church history of Ethiopia, 1696 AD is a rare book and true historical account, among other things. The two great splendid Roman missions into that empire. So there were two Roman missions into that empire, right? And this is, has nothing to do with that whole Frumentius thing. That was Armenia. That's a whole different connection right there. And even at that time, there were many Ethiopians, right? Christianity, belief in Christ was the grassroots religion at that time, right? Because there's no way that he just, if, if he had to force the people, if they wasn't already Christian at a grassroots level and he had to force them. Do you know the kind of bloodshed that would have happened in Ethi in Axum? See, that, that, that's a big lie that they tell you, right? That's a big lie they tell you because it's too amazing to really understand that when you look at the truth of the matter, right? What Ethiopia has said historically and what has historically been said about Ethiopia resisting Roman Catholicism, right, for over a thousand plus years, almost 2,000 years, almost, I mean, if it's five, uh, you know, for a thousand and a half years, it has resisted that, you know what I mean? And it represents something that is very unique, right? amongst itself, both in this connection with, with, with black Judaism or the black Jews and, and the Israelites and the biblical narrative, right? See, the Romans were on the wrong side of history. Think about it. They were on the wrong side. They were the ones persecuting the, the Judeans, the Judaites, the black Jews of the first century time, right? Then later on, they're now trying to claim the origin, right, of the, of the Yeshua mission, Right. When they clearly understand what it is. And guess what? They're able to get away with it among a lot of ones who really can't think right well for themselves. The two great splendid Roman missions into that empire, Judeo-Christian Ethiopia is that empire being placed in their true light. There are many narratives and stories of both the church history of Ethiopia past and present true and false that have been circulated and given credence to for better and for worse. However, this document testifies to a, and we're going to quote this right here. There's a quote here. This is not the clearest picture of it, of the cover, but we have this lojs.org. Get a copy. This document testifies to a church that was never at any time under the papal yoke. Did you hear what we said? Did you hear what the history, this historical document and others testify to? That the Ethiopian church, right, the Ethiopian church, right, the Orthodox Tawahedo church, right, was a church that was never at any time under the papal yoke. And because it was at, at, no, at no time, right, never at any time under the papal, the Pope yoke, Roman Catholic yoke, is the reason why they continually historically have tried to attack it, right? Try to attack it, whether the Battle of Ottawa, whether an invasion in the time of His Majesty, or the events that are testified into this in this book, right? A couple of hundred years earlier, right? All they had to do is say, "Well, you began from us, you are us." But the Ethiopians said, "Nah, nah, 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 nah," right? And what do they do? They did not have their weight at at the time in the 1500s, right, to attack the Ethiopians. Yes, the Portuguese, who were Roman Catholics, they did give assistance because the Ethiopia reached out to others that believed as they believed. And from the Portuguese coming in to assist against the Mohammedans, they gave word back to their mother church, and their mother church sent missionaries that were attempting to persuade and convert the Ethiopians to come under the sea of Peter of Rome, and they resisted, and it got kind of bloody. A few of them died, too, trying to force the Ethiopians. We got facilities, 
facilities was an emperor for a time that kind of went along with the Roman Catholic thing and it caused mayhem in his country. And he abdicated the throne, gave it to his son, right? And it becomes a warning to the Ethiopians not even to play around with that, right? So Ethiopia has a long history of resisting the Roman Catholic Church. How dare these people say, well, it started out from the Roman Catholic Church. The only reason why ones like Jabari say that is because he allegedly was a former Roman Catholic himself. Now he's a Roman Catholic cometicist priest, right? So Michael Geddes, in his book here, The Church History of Ethiopia from 1696, from 1696 AD bears witness to the truth of the time and age when the faithful Ethiopian princes, instead of only being nursing fathers, instead right, of being only nursing fathers, they instead struggled hard. They fought. They struggled hard of late years to have brought its neck under. Never, never rested until it had both broke that insupportable yoke Asunder, speaking about the papal Roman Catholic yoke, and secured itself from ever having the like attempts made against, again upon its liberty. Now that was remember the book here is sixteen ninety six. They're speaking about incidences that occurred nearly a hundred, right between a hundred to two hundred years earlier. Right, this is a, a British document that was written. It is a very important document, it has a lot of historical to get the Ethiopians' testimony and even the Romanist testimony. Even according to the Roman Catholic Church, they testify that one of their failures, and this is why we think that they're still trying to get success and it's like they're more successful now after the godless and creeping coup against the conquering line of the tribe of Judah against Haile Selassie. It's like now they're making more inroads. You see the whitewashing of the imagery and all the confusion that's going on in Ethiopia. Now, and now also with black people here in America speaking something that our ancestors knew was a bold-faced lie. Like what Jabari and others, they're trying to say, well, more academic research, academic research, nothing. Right. The truth was already known. You can't change the truth from its place. The same truth that ones like Michael Geddes knew back then, they had a better insight to it than some academic consensus today or some anti-Ethiopian black people nowadays. Yes, you got them. That is until the outrages of the modern times. Right? This is this is in our kind of write up here, quoting from the book and also putting it in context, reading the back of the book, such as 1896. Look at that. 1696. Then we get 1896 Battle of Ottawa that occurred during the reign of Emperor Minulik II or Dagmawi Minulik. Right? That was also a covert war for religion, my right? a covert war of the Roman Catholic fanatics, right? This book chronicles and narrates from a variety of then existing resources compiled and presented by the author, the former and then anti, anti-papal Protestant Church of England, right? So you want to get the real testimony about the so-called Catholic Church, we have to look to the anti-papal Protestants, right? In that level, the Protestant Church, right, did a good work of exposing what was going on, right, in their own former church, the Roman Catholic Church. So this is from the then anti-papal Protestant Church of England and certain of the brotherhood who had a, quote, right understanding. This is what ones like Jabari and others and, and, and what's the other guy's name? I don't want to say the name too much, but what was his name? Garfield, right? Well, you know, Garfield. What well, they either don't understand or don't want to understand. They don't have a right understanding betwixt all. It says that the brotherhood who had a right understanding betwixt all anti-papal churches and thereby attempted to unite them into all into one body. In other words... That the ones that were going against the Roman Catholic Church with the with the Protestant Reformation and, and you know that rebellion there were looking around at other churches and saying, look at the Ethiopian church. They've been resisting this yoke of the Roman Catholic Church for hundreds, over a thousand plus years. 
let's look at their example. And this book, this document is a is is is, is a testimony to that and evidence as well. My who had a right understanding betwixt all anti-papal churches and thereby attempted to unite them all into one body against the Roman apostasy. So what they even say in this book is that the Ethiopian church and other churches like the Ethiopian church, they understood the apostasy that the Romans were about. That's why they were resisting them century in and century out for over a thousand plus years. And then one like Jabari said, what? He need to stay in his lane, right? Even that lane, he's, he, he's driving over the medium. This prophetic and historical period of composition was at the height of the book of Revelations Church of the Reformation, the Church of Sardis. So here we put in this footer here regarding what Revelation is showing about dispensations of time until the coming of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, until that revelation, right? The Church of Sardis, that was the Church of the Reformation, a once believing remnant. In other words, we give credit to the Protestants at a certain period of time, because during a certain period of time, many of them were anti-papal. They recognized from a true Christian perspective the apostasy that Rome represented. But they themselves also fell after that to apostasy, right? As we have even what happened with the enslavement of the Beta Israel, the Israelites. But then again, a lot of that was prophecy too, right? But you, you can choose... Right, you can choose. You, you can choose. Sadly, as Saint John the Revelator revealed in his testimony, this church's works, speaking about the so called um Protestant church. The Protestant church has a glimmer of a good history where they were resisting the Pope. They recognized the Pope's influences, right, that were like in sheep's clothing. Right, but really inwardly ravening, ravening wolves. But many of them began to notice that there were other churches, right, that had resisted, right, resisted the Roman church and other churches that were totally separate from the Roman church and went back in time to that early biblical period of time, like the Ethiopian orthodox to wider church i'm not just saying the institution but i'm saying the the belief was in that region it was a grassroots right and we can prove that it was a grassroots belief right and then azana recognizing that there's a strength here now he accepts the truth more fully and he recognizes that grassroots amongst his people so the only obvious thing to do Right was to officialize it. Now, what happened with Meroway? That's a whole internal civil war, right? In, to, in Ethiopia today and other places, we have people who are part of the same family fighting each other over different reasons, some valid and some invalid reasons. Let's talk about that separately, but trying to tie what occurred with Aksum and, and Meroway, that was political. What about when Meroway and others attacked Aksum? These things happen, brothers and sisters. But speaking about the church history of Ethiopia, many of these ones don't know it, and we're already a little bit over the time in this particular vlog right here, here, here. But we just had to just say a couple of words on this, right? And what we really need to do is look at getting into the details in this book as well as in the Ethiopian Tawahido Church. You know, due to a little limitation of time right here. But let's play this right here again for you at the outro. Right? This is what the Roman Catholic, uh, you know, the Roman Catholic comedic priest Jabari, right? Said. Okay, hold on for a moment. Here's, here's the liar. Hold on for a moment. Hold on. Hold on for a moment. Hold on. 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 Two minutes of Sister Noble, African spirituality versus the God of the Hebrews. This is on the so-called Sadneta platform. Jabari um, is speaking, former Roman Catholic. Just take note, all right? Yeah, so now he's a comedic priest. Go figure. When in actuality, the folks that gave you the things that you like were the Roman church. Oh, my God. You're not following the, the, the Coptic church. You're not saying, I'm a Coptic Christian. Nobody's saying that. I even hear people say erroneously, well, I'm going to 
I'm gonna um, focus on on um, the Ethiopian church. Uh, and then when I tell them the history of how the Ethiopian church came into existence, they pretend lies. that they didn't hear it. Mm, you're lying. Uh, the Ethiopian church has its origins in the Roman church. Uh, so, yes. now, I'm not saying that they were beholden to them, because they did develop some things on their own, but they came out of someone who was part of the Roman Catholic church. Wait, 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 wait pause for a moment, pause for a moment right here. He said they came out of someone who was part of the Roman Catholic Church. No, the belief in Christ was already grassroots in that region of the world. This is testified and known to, right? Known to. Sometimes the people are are believing the truth before the rulers have to catch up. Sometimes the rulers are not always leading, you know, guiding the people from the head, but is following them like the shepherd from behind. But he's saying that, what's his last point he's saying right here? I want to touch on this right here. Let's, let's go back to this. Oh, 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 someone who was a part of the Roman Catholic Church, just like Jabari. You get that? The Ethiopian Church has its origins in the Roman Church. That's what he says. So, yes. now, I'm not saying that they were beholden to them, because they did develop some things on their own, but they came out of someone who was part of the Roman Catholic Church. He called back to Rome for reinforcements to help proselytize these people. And it's those Ethiopians That's that a lie too. destroy Great Nubia. Oh. They oh. destroy Great Nubia. No, they didn't. They sack Napata. No, they didn't. No. They sack Meroe. See, you made a mistake. <laughs> they sack Meroe. Oh, huh. So, K. Mahert, K. Salam, I would love for you. You said Jabari is wrong on Ethiopia. Now, who is a, if you're going to tell me that the Ethiopian church comes from anywhere other than the the conversion of Azana, ask yourself who converted Azana? Who converted Azana? Who converted Azana? Ethiopia had Christianity since 40 AD. You gotta give a source, brother. Azana is the first emperor that converts Christianity in Ethiopia. Now, now before the Roman church took over, okay, took over the whole faith. Okay, there, there were the Hebrews that were Christians. There were the Hebrews that were Christians in the first century. So are you going to disregard those Christians that were Hebrews were Israelites? Okay, enough of Jabari, enough of his yeah, lies. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Floyd Mayweather lies. Okay, let's get into this. So we had the Ethiopian eunuch who was a Jew, a Yehudi. He was a Yehudi, right? He was a Judean. Right. We know how the Israelites and many of them, you know, um, already were in parts of Egypt, parts of Nubia, parts of Ethiopia, parts of Yemen, parts of Arabia. You know what I mean? And we know how things become a grassroots belief. Right. Before, you know, ones then make it like, you know, like when I said unofficial holidays before these holidays are made so-called official people are already doing something and he said well since the people are already doing something you know we're now going to make this this is what happens but he, he focuses on that particular point and we just uh rejoin it with this evidence pointing out books like this right here this is one primary resource and document right here right that goes into the true narrative so he's getting the narrative from like a second, third hand perspective. Here we get the narrative from a, a first hand perspective and also a second hand perspective referring to first hand information in this particular document, Church History of Ethiopia from 1695. So more to come on this right here. Shalom Habarim. Shalom. Pick up on this a little bit more right here, here, here.